I've been in medical school for four years now and all of that comes down to one thing, the match. That's where I'm gonna do my residency and it decides the next five to seven years of my life. If you wanna know more about what that process is like, stick around. How's it going everyone? My name is Adrian and welcome back to my channel. I'm now a fourth year medical student. Uh, crazy how the time has flown by and I'm actually preparing to match into residency now. So in this multi-part series, I'm gonna be talking about what the match has been like. Uh, in this first part, I'm really gonna be focusing on the application uh, and kind of all the stresses that have come with that. So let's talk about what fourth year of medical school has been like. I feel like that's really important to kind of set the context for where I'm at now. So as I've shared on this channel, uh, the first year and a half to two years of medical school are considered preclinical years and it's really classroom learning to get the basics of physiology, anatomy, and all the organ systems. And then the third year of medical school, which I've done a lot of vlogs showing what that's like, is all about getting your core clinical skills down in all the different kind of core fields of medicine. And the fourth year of medical school is really focused on preparing you for residency. Uh, unlike the other years where everyone does the same rotations and the same classes, it's really been more focused on what I'm going into and that's general surgery. So I started off the year by taking step two of the boards and this is a really big exam. I made a whole video about what it was like studying for that and it was about a month, four to five weeks of hardcore studying eight to 10 hours a day. After taking the medical boards, I started working on my surgery sub eyes and what sub eye stands for is sub internship and it's basically basically rotations where I work as a medical student, but I'm now supposed to be doing the job of the intern or the first year resident. It's different from third year rotations in that I suddenly had a lot more responsibility. I was no longer just following one to two patients. I was actually following often 10 to as many as 15 patients at a time. And the point of sub eyes is kind of twofold. One is the most straightforward and it's just to get those skills to get you ready for intern year or the first year of residency. Uh, you know, you really become more involved in the team. I think it's a lot more rewarding because I was able to help out a lot more than usual. Third year, you're just trying to figure things out, but I feel like I had acquired enough skills that I was able to be helpful. Um, and it's also helpful to see if you wanna go into this field. And for me, general surgery, doing these sub eyes actually helped me to really confirm that this was the right field for me. And the other goal of sub eyes is to prepare your residency application. So on top of trying to learn and really become kind of the best uh, intern that you can be, you're also sort of constantly stressed about having to worry about your grade and getting a letter of recommendation. So you can get three grades on a sub I, it's either uh, fail, pass, or pass with honors. And it's really important to get a pass with honors because you want to show that you are exceptional in this field and you wanna have the strongest application possible. And you are also trying to get a really good letter of recs. And I think that was by far the most stressful part of sub eyes was constantly being evaluated, constantly kind of second guessing yourself and trying to impress the team. Um, and it kind of has a performative aspect, which is probably one of the most stressful parts of medical school, but it was hard. It was working often 60 to 80 hours a week, kind of really getting to see what is it like to be a surgery resident. So I feel like it was a huge challenge, but it was also really rewarding to just try your best at something. And I feel like I really saw a growth in myself like I hadn't seen before that. Let's talk about the application. So after taking my boards, passing them, doing my sub eyes, getting my letters of recommendation together, it was time to apply. I created a list of residencies that I was gonna apply to. I applied to 46. I feel like the application process for applying to residency was a little bit more relaxed than applying to med school. That might just be because I already had all my supplies ready and all I really needed to do was my personal statement. Um, and I think part of it might also be that when you're applying to med school, I think only 40% of applicants get even one acceptance. So it really feels like you are fighting an uphill battle compared to for residency. Among US MD medical students, I think the match rate is 90 to 95%. So I felt a little bit more secure that I'd be able to match. So to give a rough overview of what the residency application cycle looks like, in the fall is when your primary application is due. This is your just your basic personal statement, letters of recommendation, and your grades. 
you send that out to all of the programs on your list. And then in the winter, you start to get, uh, you know, interview invitations and then you do interviews. And then at, in February is when you make a rank list. So unlike med school where you actually get accepted to programs and you can choose between which programs you like best out of where you've been accepted, for the match, you rank the programs in the order that you want to go to them the most. So um, if you interview at 10 programs, you order them from one to 10, and then at the same time, these programs are ranking the students that they want the most. Um, so they're ranking probably hundreds of students in most cases. And then in March, there's match day and everyone finds out where they matched. So there's no choice. It's not like you're choosing between programs at that point, you are really, stuck with and committed to wherever you match. So for me, I felt pretty good about my application. I felt like it was a strong application. It wasn't, I didn't have crazy high board scores or you know, I didn't win a Nobel Prize or do anything crazy, but I felt, I felt like it was solid. So I turned in my application in September and in October is when there was one date when general surgery programs were allowed to start sending out interview invites. And so I started really getting pretty nervous and Honestly, it only got a little bit worse from there. Just like applying to medical school, when you apply to residency, you wanna get as many interviews as possible. Because if you interview at 15 medical schools, you have to get rejected by 15 to not get a spot. So it's kind of a similar concept for residency. And most of my advisors told me that I should shoot for at least 12 interviews and 15 would be ideal which is a lot of interviews to do, especially because they last the whole day, but this is kind of the mindset that I had going into it. So the interview release date finally came and on that day I got three interviews. So I felt okay about that and by the end of the week I had gotten two more, which was not bad, but I was starting to get a little bit nervous. The next week I got two more, so I was at seven and then a couple of weeks later I got one more, so I was at eight. So this was definitely probably the low point, I, at least I'm hoping, uh, will probably be the low point of the season for me just because I was definitely expecting to get more interviews. Uh, I started to get really stressed, have a lot of self-doubt, and I started looking up the statistics about, you know, what are your chances of not matching when you only have eight interviews? So I'll put the graph here and your chances of matching into general surgery with eight interviews is about 75%, give or take. And you might hear 75% and say, that sounds like a pretty good chance. You know, I would take that chance. And it, it, it is a good chance overall, but you know, this is kind of what I've been working towards for years and years and years, it feels like. To kind of feel like there's a 25% chance that all of it might not work out was so stressful. Ideally, I wanted to be at a 90, 95% chance of success, not 75. That's like a C, right? So kind of all these possibilities started going through my head. What happens if I don't match? What do my backup plans need to be? What can I do to make sure that I absolutely do everything I can to match? So I feel like this was a couple weeks where it was just so stressful. Like I was on a hard rotation as well. I was doing my internal medicine uh, sub-eye and just kind of all the stress of being on that rotation and then you know, thinking about this all the time, it was not something that I wanna go through again. I always try to be pretty optimistic and I feel like the silver lining here was that all of the programs that I did get interview invites at, I actually really liked. I felt like they were in locations that I really liked and I could see myself living in. And you know, in general, they were all actually programs that I was hoping I would get invites from. I think at this point overall, I just really tried to not be discouraged and really, you know, I had to just believe in myself and know that these interviews are coming. It's time to absolutely murder them, do an amazing job at them and make sure that I match so that I can keep doing, you know, what I want to do most. And I really want to advance to the next stage, which is being a general surgery resident, right? So I think for me, for med school, for example, I got a lot of interview invites and it was nice because I felt so sure that I was going to get into medical school and I definitely did not have that same luxury when applying to residency. So I think just I've tried to really have a positive mindset and really stay focused knowing that when these interviews come around, I need to absolutely kill them. Besides that, a lot of my life has just been waiting this year. Uh, fourth year is notoriously relaxed and I've had a lot of rotations that are non-clinical where I'm just from home on Zoom or I'm working on research. Uh, so that's left a lot of time for self-care but it also leaves a lot of time for stress. 
The next part of this series is gonna be me talking about what the interviews are like for residency, and I'm also gonna be talking about ranking these programs and how I thought about ranking them. It's very stressful thinking about where I'm gonna be committed to going for five to seven years. That's how long general surgery residency is. And, you know, I recently got married. And so this is also something I'm always kind of working through with my wife because she's also going to be coming with me for all this time. So I think it's, you know, it's really stressful, but it's fun. And, you know, it's just kind of a crazy journey. So if you want to stick around and see more of what this is like, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.